Hello and what is going on everybody, it's Steven here and welcome back to another China Phone unboxing and first look video. So today we're going to check out the Qbot X11 and I have here two packages because I've got one from the Qbot factory, it's the white one, so the left box, and I've actually bought the right box here with that warranty seal here from Amazon. And this phone is currently very popular because it's in Sony Xperia, I wouldn't say clone, but look alike, it's waterproof, comes with some pretty decent specs, but no 64 bits, no LT and no Android 5.0. Anyway, um, the specs, they're definitely nice. The retail price is about 160, 170 euro, something like that. It depends where you buy from. And well, that one here, so the white one is from the Cubot factory. Thanks for sending me one out. And the right one, so the black one is actually from Amazon. So the phone is so popular that it actually sells also on Amazon. And I've bought it from Do Cooler. You can find the link down below in the description. So they had some promotion and they shipped from Europe. So I paid something like $210, but well, with, with tax, is included because it came from Europe and I was really happy about it. So good price, fast shipping and if you want to check it out it's Do Cooler on Amazon, link down below in the description and also you can find the official keyboard website and it's also down below in the description. So well, I have here the black and white version and today we're going to check them out. So we can also talk a little bit about the specs of the phone. Now the Cubot X11, it doesn't support LT, so it's a 3G phone because it's running the MTK6592 octa-core processor, the lower clocked version which is running at 1.7 GHz. And I would say I will just now zoom a little bit in and show you here the specs of the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, so here you can see the specs of the phone and as I've said before, it is running the MTK6592A octa-core. So that's the 1.7 GHz octa-core, it's not that fast like the true 2.0 GHz octa-core, but well, less heat and it supports 32 bits, so no 64 bits. And also it doesn't support LT, so we just have 2G and 3G on that smartphone. But all in all, yeah, kind of nice chipset and it's still not bad, even though there's the new generation so now is another generation coming but it's really not a bad chipset at all. In the chipset you will find the Mali 450 MP GPU you can check the benchmarks down below so it also supports a lot of 3D games you don't have to worry about that. 16 gigabytes of ROM plus 2 gigabytes of RAM which is quite common and you can extend the internal memory with micro SD cards up to 32 gigs. That's what Cuba told me but maybe even 64 gigs is possible. Display size 5.5 inches HD so 720p 1280x720 pixels and yeah it is running Android 4.4 straight out of the box so no lollipop for this device right now. The capacitive touchscreen, it should be a 10-point multi-touch screen. Sounds really good, but we'll later check out if that is true. The camera, well, I did read that this phone here comes with the IMX214. But well, the IMX214 is a 13 megapixel sensor. <clears throat> and this phone says here 16 megapixels. So this cannot be true, so this is definitely interpolated. And that's on the rear camera. So you see 60 megapixel rear camera, just Google Cubot X11, IMX 214, and then you will see what I mean. 8 megapixels on the front, so I guess when they interpolate the rear camera, front facing camera will be interpolated for two, so expect something like 5 megapixels. It shoots with a 1.8 aperture on the front and on the back, which sounds really good, so this can catch a lot of light. And I'm really curious on how good, yeah, they will perform. Then we have quad band on GSM, quad band on WCDMA, it's a dual SIM, dual standby phone as always, and that are basically the main specs here of the Cubot X11. Alright guys, so that's basically it, then now let's just go, oh yeah, I forgot, this phone is waterproof, but I think I told you that before, and now that are the main specs. Okay guys, then now let's go, let's unbox this thing, and let's see what we can find inside of the box, so let's go. Now guys, there we go, let's do a quick unboxing, first of all, let's get started with the black version from do cooler so from Amazon and honestly I have to say I already had a look at the smartphone because I was so excited and well it's looking very nice but the white version it's still in the package comes with the sleeve so it's sealed but I already opened up the black version to check it out and well there we go so we can just have a quick look here at the smartphone and it really looks like a Sony Xperia. I mean, just check this out. It's very beautiful. It also comes here with buttons inside of the display. That's something I don't really like. So I like them here at the bottom on the frame so you don't lose space. But well, it comes with a metal frame looking very nice. It's thin, it's waterproof. It comes with glassy on the backside. Really looks like an Xperia, but it's a Cubot. Very mirroring surface here. Not really sure about the stability of the glass. 
in the review I will definitely try to scratch it and check it out, but so far it seems very stable and feels pretty good in my hands. It's not so heavy, I expected that this phone is actually heavier, but it feels absolutely nice in my hands. But before we check it out, let's put it beside, let's check out all the accessories. Now here um, we have some plastic thing inside of the box, so what do we have here? A little instruction on how to use the buttons. Well, I think everybody is knows how to do that. Here we have a transparent silicone rubber case. Looks kind of nice, but well, um, the phone seems to be very, um, very well built. So I'm not really sure if I would use that case here because it just looks like a condom here around your phone. Okay, so there we go. Fits perfectly nice, but. I just don't like now how it feels to press the button. So, yeah, without the without the um, rubber case here, it looks way way better. So probably I won't use it, but hey, it's included for free. So if you care about your smartphone, then just use the case. Okay, here we have a screen protector, but there is already one on the smartphone, so don't worry. You get two screen protectors: one on the phone, one replacement screen protector. Here we have a quick starter guide and I had keyboard phones now for a very long time and usually they just include a user manual yeah which looks always the same and you see it's actually made for a different phone so it doesn't even look like the X11 but well who cares about the quick starter guide honestly Okay, let's open up this box here and here inside of the box we can find a charger but this is kind of bad because because it doesn't come with the correct connector for my country. So that's the American power socket connector if I'm right. And well, I don't, um, I can't use that without an adapter and there's no adapter included. So that's the only bad thing, but you can get this in your local electronics store for something like five bucks. USB port is straight in, but the charger doesn't look very special. Here an LED at the top. And here on the sticker we can see it's what the hell is that it's five volts one amp output so a five watt charger and there's no quick charging on a smartphone okay here's the second box so what do we have here and there we go probably a cable and well a tool here to open up the sim card tray so as always you get here such a little needle pin or whatever and here we have the micro usb charging cable so let's open it up even though um, you get a black phone, you get white accessories. Well, I don't care about that actually. USB cable to connect it to the charger or to the computer. Okay, so that was here inside of the box of the black model. Then let's go and let's check out here the white version, which is still sealed. And there we go. Oh, let's open it up. A little bit hard to do, but we have here a sticker with the IMEI numbers and I think it was also in that box all along with a cleaning cloth or something like that but I cannot find it anymore so I lost it I'm very sorry for that here you can see the IMEIs and keep that sticker because well if you just um, yeah for some reason clear your NVRAM and you need to restore the IMEI this can be very useful and yeah there is no sticker with IMEI oh yeah there's another one so you can see here model number, QBOT and the IMEI number. So it comes in such a protection bag actually and that's the white version which looks fabulous. Oh my god, it looks like a bezel-less phone. This looks very, very nice. So maybe we can power it on. Let's just check this out. And oh yeah, but it comes with a black bar here around the display. So it's actually not bezel-less, so it's the usual Chinese cheating that they just make here. A black bar around the display so it looks bezel-less, but with a black wallpaper I'm pretty sure this looks fabulous. Okay, white version also looks very very nice, just check this out, keyboard right over here, very mirroring, um, yeah, back glass cover looks really really cool. Okay, then let's check out this box, maybe this is somehow different, sorry for the slow focus, 4K and non-natural lighting is a killer for this camera, honestly I need to double the lighting here which I cannot afford yet, but well, here we have also another um, yeah, rubber case, or how you call that thing, here's a transparent silicone rubber case. Then here we have a quick starter guide, as you have seen before. Another screen protector in there, so basically the same stuff, but let's see how the charger looks. So maybe it looks different if you get it directly from Qbot. Oh well, there's a different charger in there, and 
Oh well, I think this looks now like the real charger. I'm not absolutely sure why they have replaced the charging accessories on the Amazon version. Probably because of some CE certification. That could be the problem. Oh, let's just check this charger out. Now it's the same. It's 5 volts and 1 amp output, so 5 watts. But somehow I like this better. First of all, it comes with the correct power socket connector for my country. Then you can see here the keyboard logo, which also looks more serious. And, well, now all in all, I think that charger looks a little bit better, but it's actually the same. So it's outputting 5 watts. Probably they have just replaced it because of the connector for US or I don't know. But so far, that's basically what you can find inside of the box. Now, the black version comes with some additional stuff like a cleaning cloth and, well, that's basically it. But I cannot find it right now. So what I would suggest is we just have a quick look at the smartphone and then we just end this unboxing. And sorry for the damn focus, I will now just go and kill my camera. So guys, here's the black keyboard X11 and at the first look the smartphone is looking so good. I've just changed the wallpaper so you can see how thick the bezels are and let's just check them out. So we have about 3 millimeters on each side and the build quality of this phone is really amazing. The display at 720p, now sorry for that rainbow effect so that's the focus from the camera, but you see it's really kind of sharp. Yeah, now you can see it. And also the viewing angles, if you just have a look at them, they look really, really good. I will later show you them outside, so actually in the full review of that smartphone. Okay, now the only thing I don't like is that the buttons here at the bottom, they are integrated in the display. So actually, um, they are just some software buttons, like here we have the home button, menu button and the back button. And you have here about one centimeter of unused space, so that's just frame without any function. It would be definitely enough space for some capacitive touch buttons, but well, there are no capacitive touch buttons on this phone, so just software buttons. Then here at the top you can see we have the speaker in the middle and here on the left side we have the front facing camera and I'm pretty sure that it's not 8 megapixels just as advertised. And here we have light and proximity sensor. So far as I see there is no notification LED but I will definitely check this out in the full review of that smartphone. Then let's have a look at the back side and the phone comes with a protection, well with a protector here on the back side which is transparent but I just removed it to show you that this here is really scratch resistant. And where's my damn knife. Okay, we can also take the screwdriver, it's maybe not as sharp, but let's just do it guys. Let's scratch this. And really, you see, I apply a lot of force here, but it's really scratch resistant. So I had a lot of those um, sapphire glass, yeah, back covers or whatever, just like on the Elephone S2, but it broke down so fast. But here on the keyboard, it seems to be just a little bit better quality. Okay, then here we have the keyboard logo, as you can see. Here in the left top corner, we have the rear camera. And the IMX214, it's a 13 megapixel sensor, so not really sure how it can shoot with 16 when it has the IMX214. So probably interpolated, but maybe we can take one apart to check out if it's really the IMX214. The dual LED flash, if it is any, I don't think so. So the, um, the LED here at the bottom looks a bit strange, but it looks kind of small, so I'm not really sure how strong it is, but we'll check that out in the full review. Here at the bottom we have C certification and this must be actually at least 5 millimeters. Could be could be okay. Well, looking good so far. Then just have a look at the frame and the frame that phone is really thin. I'm not really sure how thin it is exactly. We can just check it out here on on the package. Oh well, it doesn't say anything here about the size of the phone. So we'll just get myself um um, how's that called in English? Uh, caliper. And then we can just have a look at the size. So just give me one minute to get it. So guys, I found the caliper, but I also found the notification LED on that smartphone. So it's left from the front facing camera. It's now really hard to see because it's off and you don't see it actually. Also on the white version, but it's a red notification LED and in the full review of the smartphone, you will definitely see it. All right, guys. So that's just regarding the notification LED, but let's come back to the actual topic, which was the thickness of the frame. So I have here the caliper and there we go. Let's check out the thickness. And I'm really excited how thick it is. And holy crap, it's just about seven millimeters thick. 
And that's just like the new Xperia design, so this is looking very, very good, guys. And also, um, the frame of this phone, it's very stable, so it's not just thin and crap, it's thin and nice quality, guys. It's almost impossible to bend, so really nice quality. The back glass, so um, really nice, you see it's very hard to scratch it, there are no gaps between the glass here and between the frame. So that's actually what I would call good build quality. People um, just hated me like I said the P7000 is shit. But just compare the build quality. I mean banana phone versus this. Oh my god, <laughs> there's a huge difference. But well, um, let's just have a look at the frame. And let's get started here with um, the power button. So it's on the right side of the, fa of the frame. And you see that's the black version, so also the frame is um, some kind of black, so it looks like the charcoal edition from the Galaxy Note 4. So here on the right side we have the power button, it's really kind of small and a little bit hard to press, so a bigger power button would be better in my opinion, but it really depends on what you like. Then here we have the first slot, and before you can access the slot you have to open up the flap, and this is to prevent water and dust entry. You see that there's a seal inside, so that rubber seal there, and we can now just open up the SIM card, or I think it's the SD card tray, but you need that tool for it. First of all you open up the flap, and then you go, then you just go in there with your tool, and it can be a little bit tricky, but now it's open. Make some strange sound, and there we go, so what's that? That looks to me like the SD card slot, right, definitely. And you can extend the internal memory with micro SD cards up to 32 gigs, and well, you can input two SIM cards and one micro SD card. So it's not a combination slot, because the SIM card slot is actually on the other side of the frame, which we're going to check out right now. Alright, so back to the frame. Then at the top of the frame, you see there's something which looks like an IR blaster. I cannot tell you right now if it is working, but we'll definitely check this out in the full review. Here the antenna, as you can see, so looks kind of nice. Now let's check out the opposite side of the frame, and here we have the 3.5mm headphone jack. And you see there is nothing to put in there, so um, it's waterproof without a cap, and that's pretty good. So also, you can just leave it open. It's definitely waterproof. Then here we have the next slot, so let's open up the flap, and there we go. That's a little bit tricky if you don't have some proper nails. And in there you can see we have a rubber ceiling. Then let's open up the tray. We need the, to the tool here once again, so that's a little bit annoying. But there we go. And this now looks to me like the SIM card tray, so it actually must be the SIM card tray. And let's see if it's a dual one or a single one. And it really looks to me like a dual SIM slot because it's very thick. So here you have the upper SIM card and here um, yeah, the bottom SIM card. And you have to have two micro SIM cards and so no regular size SIM card. And you put them actually in like with the golden contacts putting um, showing upwards or here actually the opposite side. So really kind of nice. You can put in two SIM cards and one micro SD card. Looking really nice. So yeah, let's do this a little bit later. Let me close the flap. And here um, on the left side of the frame you can see we have the volume rockers and they are also made out of metal and they're really not sliding around so the quality of it seems to be very good. Yeah, um, except of that there is nothing here on the left side of the frame. Let's check out the bottom side. And there we go. So here we have the speaker as you can see. So that's the speaker grid. Then here we have the bottom microphone as you can see, and that's the one and only microphone. And here the antennas, and here also the micro USB port to charge it, connect it to the computer or whatever. The only thing I'm missing is um, a reset button or something like that, because it's actually um, a phone with non-removable back cover and non-removable battery. That means if you flash it and something goes wrong. So, for instance, never tick the preloader when you flash such a phone. You can really fuck it up. Then you would have to um, wait until the battery is completely empty. Or you would have to open it up and, yeah, just desolder the battery. Which can be a pain in the ass because the glass usually is very thin and when you try to get it off it will definitely break, for sure. So, I've seen some 
test videos, I have removed some of those back glass covers or whatever, and they break so easy. But all in all, the design of the phone and the build quality, it's really best build quality I've seen now for a while. And I mean, it's running some older hardware, but I would definitely go for this phone right now. But please wait just for my full review of that smartphone. <laughs> All right, and here we have the white version, and I think the white version looks a little bit better because it almost looks bezel-less here because the contrast is so amazing. We have here white, we have a black frame and then a black wallpaper, and it looks like it would be a bezel-less phone even though we know there's a black bar around it, so with a bright wallpaper it probably doesn't look that good. But you see, it looks... I think the white version here looks a little bit better, but honestly, I never picked the white version, but on this one I probably would. Check out here the backside keyboard as you can see, also it's very glossy and there's still the protection foil on there so we're not going to remove it right now. And we can just have a quick look at the frame and you see it's a silver frame and not a black charcoal frame. And honestly I have to say I like the silver one so it's very shiny and I think it's cool. So I would probably go with the white version so far. And well this phone here is running Android 4.4 KitKat. We can just quickly check this out. Just the icons and everything, it's a little bit customized, looks a little bit different, but you see in the settings already. This is KitKat. If we go here to about the phone and here to the Android version, boom, there we go, here's the K for KitKat. So no lollipop, no 64 bits, all the hardware, but um, honestly I have to say I've seen some sample pics from the camera, looks very good. Battery lifetime, yeah, okay, but yeah, this is actually the first waterproof China phone which I would buy because it comes with amazing build quality. Anyway, my review is coming in the next day, so stay tuned. Check out the links down below to Do Cooler, Amazon Shop, check out keyword.net, I think, it's their official website. They often have some deals, so you can check them out. And honestly, this phone looks super, super nice. I'm so excited for the review, which will come in a couple of days. Hopefully, GPS is also good, but usually on MTK6592 phones, you don't really have to worry about GPS because GLONASS support and everything. But yeah, we'll talk about all those things in the final review. So thank you for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate your support and I really hope that you're also there in the full review of that smartphone. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a nice day and bye-bye.